Toy fans, Aaron here. Tonight I'm going to take a look at the Kessel Mine playset and this is a Walmart exclusive. Now I did pick this thing up a few days ago. It went on rollback price at Walmart for $20 instead of the regular $40. I had yet to see this in the stores. Luckily for me when I ordered it online it came in great condition. That hasn't always been the case from Walmart so you know who knows how your results are going to uh, turn out there. But anyways let's head on over to the table and check this thing out. And a real quick look at the packaging. This is pretty much the same thing that we got for the Vandor 1 playset. It's just a little bit small and a little bit thinner, but otherwise the look is pretty much the same. You get a large image of the playset front and center showing off the control room up top with two other levels extending below that. Off on the right side you got your little two-in-one being shown off that the back side it flips around. Shows off other levels of the of the Kessel Mine. Below that, you got yet another Han Solo figure included here. And then just off to the side a little bit, you got your exclusive Walmart sticker. Left side of the packaging is pretty much just showing off your force link connectivity with the figure. And on the right side of the packaging, just a brief description about Kessel. On the back side, once again, you just got your features being shown off of this playset. You got a little kid having fun with his action figures on it and such. Second side being shown off just to the right of that. And then a couple images showing off the action features of the turret that's included. And then on the left just shows you that you do need to assemble this. Your various parts that it comes with and the other accessories that are included. And taking it out of the packaging, obviously you do have some assembling to do. As you can see, all the parts are kind of pre-cut out on these little cardboard sheets or paperboard rather. And the thickness to this is about a sixteenth of an inch, I'd say. They do pop out rather easily, but still be careful as some of these little tabs that are connected could hang on to the paper and still peel off. So be careful not to force things too much if, if it hangs on a bit. But like I said, assembly for this is rather easy and I would say not as involved as it was for the Vandor 1 playset. Not as many pieces required to be pressure fit together and once it's all completed, it is a rather sturdy playset. So everything does hold together very well and I'd say you could take this apart and reassemble it a few times before a couple of the pieces start to wear out. Overall this is about 15 inches wide and just over 17 inches tall, about 17 and an eighth I'd say. The graphic printing looks fantastic. As you can see you've got three levels to this playset, both front and then on the back while the back side is two levels with the third level just kind of being an overlooking point from the control room. Concentrating on the front side first and starting with the top level because why not? It is the control room area overlooking the rest of the Kessel Mines. And like I said, a great printing of the graphics. The control panels look great. As you can see, you got a couple droids already pre-printed on here. This is no different than what they did with the Vandor 1 playset. And I don't mind that some of the characters are printed on here. I didn't have any cardboard sets from, you know, when I was a kid back in the 80s. But my understanding, that is what they did there. So just to kind of give it that same feel, they did it again. As you see, you got a little riser platform. I gotta say, I don't know that that was necessarily needed, but we got it here. As for the floor of the area, just a bunch of steel plates printed on there. Looking pretty good. You got some hoses running along. Getting to the second level of the playset, which is getting you deeper into the Kessel Mine. Just those rock walls printed on there with some rusty steel pipes running through. Bits of steam coming off of those. And as you see, you got a Kessel Mine guard printed on here for this wall. I will say that this guy does seem a little too large in comparison to how he should be, especially when you have another figure lined up next to him. The droids on the upper platform seem much better, but this guy overall, just a little too big, too tall, too wide. And same as the Vandor 1 playset, you got a set of stairs that is really just a flat piece of cardboard giving you the impression of steps. And it just folds down, leading you down to the third level, which gets you more pipes, more of the Kessel Mine rocks sculpted into that wall, or printed rather. And then for the floor of this area, more sand, more rocks printed in there. And in this case, since it's the base level, I guess, you've got some Kessel Mine soup. Um, I forget what it's actually called, so... Kessel soup. I'm, I'm going to go with that for now. Off to the sides on this third level to help support the structure. You got these cardboard pieces that represent steel beams. Again, printing here is looking really good. And it's held together by these tabs on the top and on the bottom. Which can also do double duty as a figure stand since it does have these two pegs molded on the top of them. The overall height of each level is pretty good also. Your figures are going to fit in there nicely. They're not going to be squished in there or anything. And then flipping around to the back side, you got two levels of playability. That top part is just the back side of the control room. 
And, you know, I like the printing that they did here with the windows and the little droid that you can see looking out through the window. So that top part's looking good. This middle section, you get a look at the vault down the hallway. You've got a food-starved Wookiee pulling some Quaxium containers along. And then just off to the side of that, you can see another Kessel Mine guard kind of prodding them along. And for the floor, that rocky, sandy bottom of the Kessel Mine ground continues. And you got a little pathway uh, printed in on this section also. And then you get to the bottom level for this back side. Much of the same. Couple more droids printed in through the back. You got a lot more steel pipes running around. And the bottom on this back side looking much like the middle section. Just that printed ground. You got a little pathway printed on there also. So overall, place that's looking really good. And once you throw some figures on there, obviously this helps just complete things even more. It gives you a great area to play with. Just definitely need some more figures for it. As far as the included figures and accessories, uh, well, starting with the Han Solo figure, this is the exact same figure that you got with the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon, but in this case, he does have a little bit of that Kessel soup on the front of his boots. Since I've already reviewed this figure when I did the Millennium Falcon, I'm not going to go into all the details here. I have to say, though, that I would have much rather preferred getting a figure that was specific to this scene. You know, make it a Kessel Mine Guard, or another Wookiee, or a droid or something. I just could have done without yet another Han Solo figure, and especially one that we've already received. It having a little bit of that green Kessel liquid on there I, I just doesn't thrill me enough for that little bit of difference. Otherwise, you got to create a Quaxium Containers. Uh, you know, it looks decent for what it is. Great piece of plastic, no special painting, weathering, or anything like that. The canisters have a pretty decent sculpt to them, and you got some handles on each side of it, so you could have a couple figures carrying it. So it works for what it is. Next up is the gun turret. A little bit of assembling to this. You just attach the gun to the ball on the midsection, and then slide in the three legs, and you're in business. Pretty decent sculpting to it. It's a rather large weapon, but things are still looking all right. No special painting or anything like that. It's just a gray piece of plastic, but you do have some added details within the sculpt. Little bits of air vents there in the center of the gun. Some scrapes and scratches throughout the sides of the body. And just as they show on the cover, you can put this on that riser in that control room. It does take up the majority of the space, but you can still slide a figure behind it. The handles though, too close together. So with these basic five point figures, you're not going to get both hands onto the handles of the turret. You're definitely going to need one of the vintage collection figures or your more articulated figures to be able to achieve that look of them having both hands onto the handles. The red projectile does shoot out by pushing the button on the top of the turret. Shoots out pretty well. It is what it is. And just so you know, you do get two of these. So if you lose one, you still got another one to use. And then otherwise, you do get these two additional little stands. You know, I like these. I don't know that they necessarily needed to be included with these sets, but I'm glad that they did. Gotta say, I kind of wish they would offer these in like a bag. I could use a bunch of these little small little stands for the figures that I have on my shelves. They don't take up a lot of room and they work great. And as far as the Force Link sounds for Han Solo. Maybe you heard of me. Best pilot in the galaxy. You ready with those coordinates? Everything is under control. Slide in and get your blaster sounds. <laughs> And tapping that during the blaster shooting gets you some additional lines of dialogue. Stay sharp. I've got enemy targets incoming. Come on, get us out of here. And these are indeed the same sounds that are on the Kessel Run Millennium Falcon figure, so nothing new here. And these canisters are Force Link enabled, and here's the sounds for those. So overall, this is a good playset. I know these cardboard sets are pretty hit and miss with people. Now, originally this retailed, I think, for $40. And like I said, I picked this up for $20. But overall, I'm pretty happy with this purchase. I don't mind them doing cardboard playsets as long as they're not straying away from the plastic ones. It offers a little bit of variety. And, you know, it, it still looks cool. I just need more figures to fill this thing out. Hopefully they'll give us some of the droids and some of the Wookiees and stuff that we saw on the scene. And so that wraps up this look at the Kesselmine playset. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on it in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching.